Matin là, ma vie serait bouleversée à ce niveau-là. Fait que ça, ça a fait comme un gros blackout. Ça a fait dans ma tête. Non, je, je peux pas. Non, ça n'a pas de bon sens. Je suis venu travailler le matin, je regarde ce qui se passe. Là. They told me that there's a chance for hepatitis, uh, HIV, and any other bacteria that comes with saliva and bite wounds. And I remember just feeling sick, absolutely sick. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, now I'm, now I'm HIV positive. was given an inhaler while he was in the strip cell and he had uh, smashed the inhaler and he was attempting to harm himself with it. Uh, after we retrieved the inhaler from him upon leaving the strip cell, I'm just turning, just turning away from the door and I can hear, <sighs> I got it right in the eye and then all of a sudden I couldn't see and I remember it hit me and I just kind of turned and I thought, I'm blinking thinking, what the hell is that? And then I, I, then I realized it's his spit. And it's like right in my eye, and I remember going like this and wiping it out of my eye, and it was like right on my eyeball. Oh, man. And then the nurse grabbed me by the back of the shirt that was there, and she goes, come with me right now. And she drags me from the strip cell about 25 feet away around the corner to a treatment room. She goes, get your head under the sink. You have to rinse your eye out. You have to do it. Get your eye under there. Get the water. You have to hold your eye open. So I'm sort of confused at the time when I'm holding my eye open and I'm under the sink rinsing it out and I'm kind of looking at her with the other eye and she's going through this binder and I can see on the side of the binder uh, protocol for exposure to uh, infectious disease. I found out that this inmate was HIV positive and he liked to spit at staff in an attempt to infect them. He'd bite his mouth, the inside of his mouth, before he'd spit so that he spit at you, he had blood in his, in his spit. So he, he was, he, his attempt was to infect you, is that, that's what he was trying to do. On va t'amener à l'infirmerie. Tiens-tu? Es-tu correct? Tu es capable de me suivre ou... OK. And I remember just feeling sick, absolutely sick. Right at the time while I was with my head under there, I'm thinking, oh yeah, now I'm, now I'm HIV positive, I got kids, I got a girlfriend, I got a family life. Fuck.
As I was attempting to physically restrain him at this point, he bit the side of my head, uh, just uh, uh, in and around my left ear. I could feel this, his his teeth marks here. I could actually feel his teeth closing around the side of my head. He was reaching towards his waist with one arm, uh, which we later found out he had a weapon in his waistband, and the other hand he was propping himself up. So when I when I took that arm out, he had grabbed it brought my hand up and he bit my thumb hard enough that his, uh, his teeth prints were in my thumb and blood was drawn. Hi, Steve. I've heard about the fight. I'm gonna bring you to the hospital. How's everything? Not too bad. Yeah. You know, I'm part of the employee systems program, if ever you want to talk about it. You'll be all right. I'm going to be waiting for you outside. Okay, thanks. Good. Uh, the inmate was asked to give a blood sample with, uh, in order to determine uh, what diseases may be present in his system, so I, I, we would have a better idea of what I would have to undergo regarding medical treatment. Uh, the inmate refused. As such, I had to undergo the HIV, uh, uh, rather the counter HIV medications and the hepatitis shots and the hepatitis B shots as well because he simply refused to provide us with the information we needed. I believe that the victim should be the one to know whether or not there's uh, any kind of contractable disease. They're the innocent party in all of this. It wasn't like I asked to be bitten. If the correctional officer had uh, the information about the status of the inmate in terms of a blood sample, it would make a tremendous, absolutely a tremendous uh, difference uh, because you know then that you're going to be okay, you know that your family is going to be okay, uh, and also you have been given information and a task and a procedure has happened in order to help protect you and protect your mental health and the mental health of, uh, of, the, of the family. All right, ready? Yeah. Moi et des collègues, nous nous sommes dirigés dans la salle commune alors qu'il n'y avait plus de détenus. 
pour effectuer un petit peu plus une fouille approfondie, savoir si les détenus auraient pu dissimuler de la contrebande, euh, soit une arme artisanale ou quoi que ce soit. Je me suis penché en dessous d'une table, j'ai regardé, et à ce moment-là, quand j'ai déposé ma main au sol, j'ai senti une douleur à la main. Fait Immédiatement, j'ai regardé, et là, j'ai vu que dans un morceau de plastique, il y avait un aiguille. Donc, immédiatement, j'ai retiré mon gant de fouille, et là, j'ai vu que euh, il y avait, je, je saignais au niveau de la main, que ça m'avait perforé euh, la peau. Ça a fait dans ma tête, non, je, je peux pas, mais non, ça n'a pas de bon sens. Je suis venu travailler le matin, je regarde ce qui se passe. Là. Puis là, je voyais dérouler, parce que d'autres de mes confrères, d'autres de mes consoeurs l'avaient vécu. Je savais par où, ce qui, de par où ce qui avait passé, puis ça ne me tentait pas. Puis je ne voulais pas l'entendre. Puis là, à ce moment-là, on se met à penser à plein de choses, à quoi cette aiguille-là a pu servir. Donc là, c'est là qu'un petit peu un sentiment de panique qui s'empare un peu de nous en se disant... Euh, qu'est-ce qu'ils ont fait avec ça? Qui a été en contact? Est-ce qu'il y a une personne? Ou de nombreux détenus ont été en contact avec les lui? Ce qui devient le plus inquiétant, c'est le nombre de détenus, des fois, qui sont contaminés soit par le VIH ou soit par l'hépatite. Parce qu'en prison, hein, ils ont une vie quand même assez euh, rock'n'roll. Je ne connais pas leur, euh, leurs habitudes sexuelles. Ils peuvent se tatouer. Ils peuvent prendre de la drogue, ils peuvent faire des intraveineuses, ils peuvent faire un peu quelque chose qu'on n'a pas nécessairement le contrôle, malgré qu'il y ait une sécurité dans les pénitentiaires, mais la, la vie, la qualité de vie ou la qualité de salubrité de l'équipement que les détenus prennent pour s'injecter des drogues ou euh, euh, lorsqu'ils décident de faire l'amour entre les autres, on ne le sait pas. Fait que... Là, il y a des risques d'infection, euh, puis tant qu'on n'a pas les résultats des tests, on ne sait pas si on est porteur d'un virus quelconque. Il y a toujours une possibilité de risque, mais ils ne sont pas capables de l'évaluer. Parce que c'est, euh, c'est impossible à évaluer. Il ne peut pas te dire à 100 il n'y a pas de danger. Il ne peut pas te dire, euh, bon, regarde, ce pas grand-chose, ta coupure ou tes coupures sont, sont mineures, ça n'arrivera pas. Ma conjointe, sur le coup, elle dit, hein, elle dit, elle dit, elle dit qu'est-ce qu'on va faire? Elle dit, on va avoir un enfant, tout ça. Elle avait même posé la question au, au médecin. Et puis le médecin, immédiatement, elle avait dit, ben là, madame, elle dit, euh, pour l'instant, elle dit, je pense pas que ce soit. Elle dit, je pense que la, la vie. Et la santé de votre conjoint est, est comme euh, présentement, c'est ça la priorité. I was placed on what are called antiretrovirals. They're HIV medications uh, designed to counter the presence of the potential presence, rather, of the disease in the bloodstream. They are extremely taxing. Uh, they are very, very hard on my on the system. Uh, I experienced. Uh, all of the side effects that they had listed to me. The side effects to the medication uh, include uh, stomach cramping, um, weight gain, uh, insomnia, irritability. The first week it was like diarrhea and a lot of nausea. Gastrointestinal issues, uh, lethargy, uh, weight gain. You know, sometimes I'd wake up in the morning, feel okay. Uh, A few hours later, You'd end up sweating, you'd be hot. Uh, uh, the whole time you were like being in a fog, just tired and sleepy. Towards the end of that 30 days, I started to develop problems with my back. My back started to bother me. Uh, that progressively got worse to the point where I was having a hard time walking around, a hard time moving. I walked around humped over all the time, like my back really hurt. What happened to me was I was supposed to take it for 28 days. Um, after three weeks, the side effects were... Uh, interfering with my liver, which is on this side. So I started with this pain probably after about 14 days, and it really got really bad. So I was due for my next um, my three-week follow-up. When I went in for my three-week follow-up, the nurse to- uh, at the uh, clinic in Winnipeg told me to come off the medic, to stop taking the medication immediately because it was damaging my liver. Um, I don't know whether I would ever take it again. Perhaps maybe the only time if I got poked by an or, or spit on by an inmate who had full-blown HIV or AIDS, I would probably take it. But other than that, I don't I don't know if I would actually take it. The costs are too high. J'ai le virus, si je suis infecté, je pourrais y passer par la salive. Ça veut dire que j'ai été inquiet rien qu'au niveau de, d'embrasser ma blonde. On a la peur d'être contaminé, puis bon, il va-tu l'avoir, il va-tu me le donner, il le tue. Hein? 
euh, on ne prenait pas de condom. Il a fallu recommencer euh, l'usage des condoms. Fait que notre vie a changé énormément à ce niveau-là. Euh, tu sais, si moi j'ai une coupe, puis lui il a une coupe, puis euh, on s'accroche, euh, ben, il pourrait me contaminer. Pas que tu te sens sale, mais tu te dis, je suis peut-être porteur de quelque chose. Tu sais, fait que c'est complètement, euh, c'est mis de côté. On se marie pour le meilleur, pour le pire. Là, on était dans le pire. Mais ça dure combien de temps, le pire? C'est quoi le pire? Comment on gère ça? Euh, comment est-ce qu'on vit ça? Euh, Puis moi, là-dedans, oui, j'ai peur, je t'inquiète, mais lui, c'est doublement pire que, que moi, parce que peut-être que moi, je ne l'attraperai jamais, parce qu'il y en a qui ne l'attrapent pas, mais lui, il peut l'avoir. Les conséquences sur ma vie familiale étaient très sérieuses. Il y avait un stress psychologique immédiat sur moi et certainement sur la partie de ma femme. Physiquement, ça a changé un peu parce que nous n'étions pas capables d'être intimes sur une façon régulière et pas dans la façon dont nous étions avant. Nous devons être beaucoup plus attentifs en termes d'utiliser la protection et de juste contacter avec les fluides corporels et des choses comme ça. J'ai hugé mes enfants, mais je n'ai pas kissé les enfants. J'étais tellement inquiète sur les conséquences de ma vie familiale que je n'ai pas kissé les enfants. J'étais tellement inquiète sur les conséquences de ma vie familiale que je n'ai pas kissé les enfants. J'étais tellement inquiète sur les conséquences de ma vie familiale Uh, about exposing them, even though the risk is, you know, as you're told, it's minimal. I st still was very, very worried about exposing my children. We've sort of done everything right in terms of taking the medications and seeing the doctors and doing all that stuff, but at the end of the day, we still don't know that he's healthy. They advise you not to have uh, sex with your partner for... Uh, at least the first six months and, and uh, after that protected sex so for five months we uh, we didn't have any contact with each other at all we slept in the same bed and that was it we didn't kiss we didn't really show each other much affection you simply have to exist in a physical isolated state for at least uh, the, the period of the, med uh, the, the medication is uh, in effect we went for dinner one night and had some wine and and uh We were going to practice safe sex. We used the condom, and the condom broke. She became pregnant. So for the last month before I got my six-month blood test, she was pregnant, and that that was uh, it was awful for me. But I know it was extremely awful for her. She didn't know, you know, she was she was really unsure as to whether she was infected now and and our baby. Je vais toujours avoir à penser à cet incident-là, ça c'est clair. Ça, tu peux pas effacer ça. T'as beau vouloir, probablement que je vais être plus prudent, puis on peut pas être plus prudent parce que j'ai affaire à des humains, j'ai affaire à des gens avec un comportement, je le sais pas, parce qu'ils m'avisent pas, ils me disent pas, Pierre, en ouvrant la porte, je te saute dessus, là. Mais quand on a été victime de ça, qu'on ne sait les conséquences que ça a, euh, on fait euh, beaucoup plus attention. Je sais pas si je rentrerai pas dans une cellule parce qu'un détenu va essayer de couper les, les, les poignets, puis que je vais être obligé de faire des, de la réanimation euh, cardiaque, puis que je vais, vais être infecté rien qu'en voulant le sauver. Fait que c'est sûr que cet événement-là, dans ma tête, va toujours être présente. Euh, mais je vais faire ma job. Parce que c'est ça que j'aime faire ma job. C'est ça que j'aime être agent correctionnel. You reenact this, the, the incident itself, constantly. Would I, what would I do? Would I do something different? Um, I could have, I could have done, I could have done this, I could have done that. I've probably gone over in my head a thousand times since that first exposure on what I would do if I was ever exposed again. 
and I know the the reaction will probably be far different than it was the first two times. Somebody could throw water on you, throw you full of mustard, or throw you even with gasoline, but it stays on the outside. If somebody is throwing semen, if somebody is throwing urine, blood, feces, and it enters your body, or you think it enters your body, you feel very different. It's, uh, it's like you've been touched. In some way, the inmate's essence has seeped into your core. I can't think of another way to be assaulted that's, to me, more vicious or more uh, vile than to spit on someone or throw your bodily fluids on them. I'd sooner be punched in the face. When it comes to getting a blood sample, uh, correctional officers definitely feel that they're less important than the inmates uh, because they feel they're worried for themselves, they're worried for their families, uh, and information that would quell some of their anxiety, some of their fears, some of their worries uh, is not being given to them and available for them. Uh, he shouldn't be given the opportunity to stay confidential about it. He's the one that made the decision to bite somebody and assault somebody, and now it's my right, I believe it should be, uh, that I am made aware of whether or not he has a virus that I can contract because of his wrongdoing. Tu dis rien que parce que je suis un travailleur, j'ai été travaillé euh, ce matin-là, bon, ben, ma vie peut avoir changé. Puis pourtant, moi, je voulais rien gagner ma vie, là, puis faire la job que j'ai à faire. There are more disease carriers now incarcerated than ever before. Uh, I really do consciously think that uh, not all of them are, but I treat all the offenders like they are infected or have the potential to um, the potential to infect me. I haven't formed a relationship or even tried to during this period of time because I just can't expose anybody to that. And how do you say to somebody? Oh, by the way, I might have hepatitis or HIV, uh, and I'm not cleared to for a year. You know, like you have to tell somebody, and just you can't. I know myself well enough to know it will never go away. It will always be in the back of my mind. It's not necessarily anything that would uh, further impede my ability to live my life, but it's ever present. It has permanently changed my life. Mm -hmm. 